So our next speaker is Rissa. Um, I, uh, I, Rissa and I have been friends for years, but I saw her uh, speak at a different conference recently. It was called the Commit Your Code Conference, and she was giving this, you know, deep technical talk. And one of the tools she mentioned was just Z, and it was this easy way to navigate around to all your projects. And I took that talk, and I've been using Z ever since. Rissa is like a workflow genius, and she's going to talk to us about Git Interactive Rebase. Um, oh, we already got a fan, yeah. Um, Rissa, this is not her first time on the Laracon stage. She is one of only a few people to complete the Laracon Grand Slam, which means she spoke at Laracon US, EU, India, and Australia all in a single year. So she is an old pro at this, and she's going to do a great job. Please welcome to the stage Rissa Jackson. Here you go. Hello. Uh, it's really wonderful to be back at Laracon, seeing so many familiar faces and new faces. It means a lot to me to be part of this community. It's a really lovely, welcoming community. So I'm so grateful for all of you. I'm Marissa Jackson, and I'm here to talk to you today about Git Interactive Rebase. And specifically to answer the question, is there any problem Git Interactive Rebase can't solve? Yes. Thank you so much. This has been the fastest talk that has happened on Laracon. Um, and I'm going to help them get back on time. So uh, yeah, send me your feedback and your questions. Thanks so much. <laughs> but uh, you know, it, the timer says I have some time. So maybe I should talk about what problems it can solve. But before we get into Git Interactive Rebase, we need to set the stage. We need to talk about uh, branches. We need to talk about merge, rebase, what they mean, so that we can all be on the same page together when we get to Interactive Rebase. So we have our beautiful main branch. It has all our code. And you've been asked to do a small little feature. So you, uh, you make a little feature branch off of main and you've added some commits to it. And while you're doing that, your coworkers have added some commits as well. So what we have right now is uh, a deviation between your branch and the main branch. So how do we bring this back together? We have a couple of options, and one of them is merge. So to understand merge, what we've done here is we've added some new commits and we want to make our feature branch up to date with what is in the main branch, with the new changes that your coworkers have been doing. And so one way we can do that is we can do a merge commit. And that last commit with the star looking thing in it, that's the merge commit, is bringing together the main branch changes since you made your branch and your changes, putting them together. So merge is one tool we can use, but what about rebase? Rebase is another really cool tool. It's a powerful tool. What it does is it rewrites Git history. So instead of doing this merge commit where you try to show the new changes from main and your changes and put them together, instead you're rewriting Git history. So you put your changes at the end of the main changes, and you have this really clean line from beginning to end of your changes. And for some people, that's a really fantastic way to solve problems. Uh, there's a lot of people who kind of pick camps. They're the rebase camp or the merge camp. I'm not either camp. I think both are really cool tools, and they have their uses. It's good to think about how they can be effective and use that tool when it's the right time to use it. So let's talk about some gotchas you can have with Rebase. Um, it, like I said, Rebase is powerful and it is rewriting Git history. So one way this can go wrong is if you're working on a feature branch and you have a couple of coworkers who also want to work on that feature branch and throw some commits in there, you know, they're making some quick changes, or maybe you didn't even know they made some changes. They just saw something and ran in there and like made a quick update. If you did a rebase and you force push that, you're going to 
rewrite Git history, not just for you, but for them. And so this is one of our tricky situations. Merge will not do that. So that's one time where maybe you wanna think about a merge commit. But I don't want you to be too scared of rebase. You can be a little scared, but not too scared. Um, we have some great get out of jail free cards with rebase, and we're gonna look at those later. So now that we've set the stage for what rebase is a little bit, you know, rewriting Git history, let's look at Git interactive rebase. And if I do Git interactive rebase, I get this really great palette with the list of commands that I can work with. And I don't know about you all, but when I see a large amount of text, my eyes just glaze over. So don't worry about trying to read all of this. We're gonna break some of this down into manageable chunks. But one thing I really love about Git Interactive Rebase is how visual it is. I'm a visual person, and so I love having it tell me exactly what I can do and what it does. One of the first things you can do with Git Interactive Rebase is maybe you've made a lot of commits and you realize you don't want this one commit, it was like something you were trying out and it didn't quite work. So you can use drop. Now I wanna make sure you understand this is destructive. So don't use this if you're just trying to like re get your work back into staging, this will get rid of it. So I have a git log that I've done, a couple of commits, and one of these commits is unnecessary. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna copy that long hash right after the word commit and I'm gonna do git rebase dash I, paste that long hash, and I'm gonna do a little tilde at the end, because if I just put the hash, it's all the commits up until that one, it won't include it. Now, of course, I could just go one commit further and grab that, but I like to go the tilde route, do whichever one you want. Um, I do wanna point out, I don't have to put the whole commit hash. I could put maybe like those first seven characters, uh, that are highlighted a little bit. The ones that you see next to pick, that's the same. I could do that, or I could even do less than seven. But if there's other commits that overlap, um, I might, it might get a little tricky. So the way I avoid that, just copy and paste that whole hash, and I never have to worry about that. All right, so I'm a Vin user, by the way. Um, I like to, Thank you for the few Vim users. Um, I like to use it in the terminal. And so I'm gonna talk about how I do get interactive rebase with Vim in the terminal. And if you don't care about Vim, ignore this part. But before it said pick, I'll just go back so you can look at it. Pick, now I'm gonna do CW or change word um, that gets rid of that word pick and it puts me in insert mode. And then I put drop and then I escape colon wq right quick so now you all know how to get out of vim mode all right so now this is my git log and that commit's gone great super easy all right maybe you have some experience with git commit dash dash amend that's a really great uh great tool to use it allows you to edit your last commit or edit the commit message but it's the last commit. So if I want something like that, but I wanna go further back because I added a couple other commits, then I need to use git rebase interactive and I can use reword or edit. These are almost the same with one key difference. So reword, all it does, edit the commit message. If that's all you wanna do, reach for reword. Edit allows me not only to change the commit message, but I can edit the commit itself, the work in involved in it. You really want to be careful with edit because that can really cause some merge conflicts if you're not careful. Now, these are some of my favorite ones. These ones are really cool and why I think Git Interactive Rebase is super powerful. So we have squash and fix up. Just like reword and edit, they're very similar with one key difference. So squash, will take a couple of commits, maybe a child and a parent commit, and it will meld the child into the parent commit, push them together. It will use both commit messages though. It'll make a new commit with both messages. On the other hand, you can use fix up. 
It does the same thing, melds the child commit into the parent commit, but it only keeps the parent commits message. So if you don't wanna go and have two commit messages or three or four, fix up is really nice for that. So here's a squash example. This is a commit that's already been squashed. So you can see that it has two commit message. Here's a squash commit, here's another squash commit, but they have one hash. So fix up, we have a cleanup and a cleanup again. I'm sure all of us have done something like that and realized, oh, I forgot something. Um, so I would take the parent commit hash, the cleanup one, and I would do just like we did before, get rebase dash I commit hash. And I would need to put, very importantly, the fix up on the child commit. I'll show you later what it looks like if you don't do this. It's not the end of the world, but it just won't work. So uh, I put fix up on cleanup again. I do the CW to do that. And then I escape colon right quit, get out of in mode. And here is a new commit with a new commit hash. And it just says cleanup. All right, what if things have gone wrong? So this is uh, what it looks like if you tried to put fix up on the parent commit, you're gonna get an error message. Don't worry, we have some options. Our best emergency exit is get rebase dash dash abort. Anytime I'm not quite sure what's going on, anytime I'm worried, just throw that out there. You can start your rebase again. It's no big deal. Remember, this is your best friend. But after we've done all this rebasing, we have to push at the end. And if you push and you don't put a force, it's going to error. It's not gonna let you do that. So we're gonna have to do a git push dash dash force. But forcing is scary. Like I said, that one situation where things can go wrong with, um, with working with uh, rebase, you know, you force push and rewrite all your coworkers history. That's a problem. So I've got another option for you. This is Canadian force. It's, it's like knocking on the door and saying, sorry, can I like push this through, please? Is that okay? Is there any problems here? And if, if there's other things going on, shenanigans on that branch, force with lease is not going to work. So this is your get out of jail free card number two. All right. This is bringing back memories for me. I gave this talk at Laracon online and it was my first talk. It was very nerve wracking. And I had done this recording of what this looked like so I didn't have to do this live on stage or not on stage, it was uh, online, but didn't have to do it live and then potentially mess up. But this messed up. It did not start at its beginning. I did so many dry runs and it worked perfectly except for live, which of course that's how it goes. And so instead of panicking, well, I panicked a little, but after panicking, I switched over to my terminal and I did get interactive rebase live for everyone and people really loved it. So I'm gonna do that again. This time on purpose. So let's get into our demo. Let me go ahead and clear. Let me make this a little bit bigger. Okay, so let's do, uh, before we get started with rebase, we need to do a get status just to make sure everything's clean. Oh, I have some work that I didn't commit. So I need to make sure I do that. So as a terminal person, uh, one thing I really like is, uh, is that it? Yeah, I meant that. Uh, I usually use aliases, but I thought that would be a little confusing to follow. So. Forgive me for being a little bit slow with actually typing it out. Ugh, typing things out, who does that? Um, so I have a bit of work in this post model and um, oh, silly me, I put a empty guarded and an empty guarded means that um, nothing is guarded, but then there's an empty fillable, which means nothing can be filled. That's, that's not really right. So um, let's get rid of that. Um, so I'm gonna say, let's see. I'm gonna comment that out. Let's do this again. Now that it's commented out, actually, no, let me just get rid of it. 
<laughs> Always happens something on stage. Okay, so I've gotten rid of that extra uh, uh, empty fillable and I need to use uh, this really cool tool, get add patch to uh, stage it. Um, all you need to think about is the Y is yes, the N is no, and the Q is quit. So ignore those other letters. We don't care about that. And we're going to git commit dash M. And we'll just say clean this up. Great. So now that we have staging good, we have our logs that we can look at. So we have a couple of commits. We have a whip commit. We have all done that. We have clean up, we have clean up again, uh, we have a delete me. So let's go really quickly. And I'm gonna, oh, I need to get that hash. Let's do the delete really fast. So I'm gonna copy that and I'm gonna do get rebase dash I with the hash and the tilde, that's important. So from here, I'm gonna do that CW and I'm gonna do drop escape colon WQ and then it's rebased we can do get log and oh there we go it's gone so easy so now let's do our slightly more complicated one we're gonna do our cleanup and clean up again with a fix up this one's a little bit harder so let's hope that i do this correctly so i'm gonna do get rebase dash i hash tilde all right, so I'm gonna want to uh, put these into this parent one. Um, so let's see, let's do, let's do fix up. Actually, I'll, yeah, fix up. Fix up. Colon WQ, we gotta save our work right quick. And then I can do a get log and we can see that clean up, uh, clean up this work is gone. It's been mushed together with the clean up again. We have our new hash and it's just a much cleaner path. And I'd probably do the other one as well. So there's just one. All right, let's look at pushing this work. So like I said, that's not gonna work. We're gonna have to force. So don't worry, we're gonna do get push dash dash force with lease. Ah, yes. And it worked. All right. So that is a live demo of Git Interactive Rebase. We'll just move back to the slides to end. All right. So I'm going to go over this really fast. I'm almost out of time, but uh, there's so many powerful, cool things that Git can do. So if you're intimidated, open up a side project, play around with this stuff, and then whatever wrong things you do won't matter. And then maybe check out Git work trees, which Alex talked about this morning, Git bicep, Git grab, so much more. I'm Rissa Jackson. Thank you so much for learning about Git Interactive Rebase with me. Um, I, this is a link to my Pinkery, so if you want to follow me or connect with me or give me questions, I'd love to hear it. And um, if you're hiring, shoot me a message. If it <laughs> Great job. Here is your artisan jacket. And if you need a reference for Rissa, my name is Aaron Francis, you can call me. I will gladly be her reference. Um, Rissa, what is your opinion on, so all of that seems very, very helpful for going back into history and yeah. fixing things. So what is your opinion on the whip commits, the clean history, the atomic commits? Like where do you fall on, what is that supposed to look like, that history? Well, I mean, there's options, right? Like some people squash everything. And so all those individual commits don't really matter once the PR is merged. But I personally love Git Interactive Rebase, especially for the PR, for the reviewer, to have this clean history of this is what I did, this is what, what story I'm trying to tell you as a reviewer. And if you're not squashing all those commits, it's great for me in the future when I look back at my old work and I'm like, what the heck was I doing here? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, amazing as always. Good job. Everybody give it up for Rissa. Thanks you. Good job. <laughs>